we got to play Marrakesh with the expansion Camels and No Man's. Now, last year Marrakesh got in a couple in our in our top ten list. So um, we really love this game. And so when they came out of expansion, we were really excited to test it out and. This is our review. But before we get into it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because board games are amazing. And that's what we do here at Legends of Nirvana. Now, Randy, can you tell us a little bit more about this Marrakesh's expansion? Yeah, I can tell you a little bit more about it. Marrakesh Camels and Nomads 2023 release. Uh, this Right now, it's only from Kickstarter. They haven't got it officially in stores yet. Rating is 8.4. There's no rank on it yet. One to four player game. Uh, the 100, 120 minutes average length, age 14 and up, designed by Stefan Feld and Ulrich von Robert, art by Clemens Franz, Patricia Limberger, and Franz Vollwinkel. I know I've seen Clemens Franz and, and Franz Vollwinkel several times. Published by Queen Games. The Kickstarter for this was $55, which, considering everything you get in the box, isn't bad, but half the stuff in the box you're not going to use because. It's either there's half that's for the deluxe version and half that's for the uh, standard version. So whichever way you go, there's going to be bits that you're not going to need. Oh, so it almost felt like that there should have been two boxes, one for standard and Maybe. one for Maybe. I mean, I don't know how much the cardboard would have cut the price if just removing a few slabs of cardboard for the Well, standard. but for those that are just buying the standard. Yeah. There's a lot in here that you get that's supposed to meet for the deluxe needs. Uh, the only place I saw it that was not... Like a, you could do a, a like a late pledge on Queen Games supposedly, but when you took a link, it wasn't available up on their website. There was a five dollar like pledge fee that you could pay, and then you might have been able to get to a screen where you could order it. I can't tell because I wasn't going to pay five dollars to find out because I've already got it. Yeah, there there's it's currently out on Boardlandia for forty nine seventy six, but it's a pre order and it's out of stock already. So you can't even use that link. So your best bet right now is either the Geek Market or going to Queen Games. But when I looked at the Geek Market, I think there's only one copy and it's in Italy. Well, good luck on that front. All right. So let's talk um, about quality of components. Well, first we got to talk about what is the components. So yeah. we've got basically two major expansions which are the camels and the nomads and then there's a lot of other stuff in the box like uh, the big one being the camels which is this track it adds another dimension of things you can attribute your keshis to and then you've got the nomads which is basically just adding like wild tokens in for the most part and well, a little bit, but yeah. yeah. We'll go into a lot of that with gameplay, but just want to make sure that yeah, those are the main expansion, but there's a lot of bunch of auxiliary stuff too. So as far as the board, I think this is a good solid board. The problem is this game is a table hog on the good day with just the standard game. But when you add in the track, it's a huge table hog. Yeah, yeah, you need a big table for this stuff. Well, we had to use these other boards for our personal stuff. Um, and then that made it okay. But beyond that, that's where yeah. you pretty much have to have your own personal board. Or a big table. Or a huge table, yeah. Overall, I think it works very in sync with what's already out that you know, what we already had. Like you can't tell that it was made any differently. You know what I what yeah. I mean? So it fits right in stream. The only thing is is the poop tokens. Yeah. They could have done well, I mean, if, if you're going to have the deluxe and the standard combined, there should have been wooden poop tokens. Right, because we've got the wooden water and the wooden dates. Yeah. So they should have done that. And honestly, I would have been way more, had much more fun with it if it had the poop emoji. <laughs> poop. Um, they could have done that. You know, like that yeah. would have been cool. So, yeah, they look like little cluster bars. Uh, but, yeah, it's they're... I'm, I'm touching poop. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's very disappointing that they didn't do something more than just cardboard. Yeah, and there were negative two victory points. I at least like some type of happiness when I got uh, it. There were more than that if you accumulate a bunch. Oh, that's true. That's true. I only ever gotten one and yeah. I got rid of it. So I don't know what that's like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've gotten one and had to keep it. So <laughs> There are other people that got it. We, we were. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Overall, whatever I gave it last. 
Well, <laughs> I mean, if, if I'm just rating what's in the box for the Camels and Nomads, give it, I mean, I guess before we, we we didn't have the deluxe version, we deluxified ours, if you went will, with the coin and the... Any wooden, surprise by that? Bits. So, yeah, I mean, we went all out, got all the deluxe add-ons you could get for it. So, it now blings it out quite a bit. This, you get wooden camels, you know, I mean, and they're not screen printed like all the other things in it. Yeah, I mean, they've got the inlaid for the Keshis over there. I mean, it, everything's inlaid Yeah. as far as your personal boards and things goes. Um, so, you know, probably a seven. Yeah, that's, it's fine. that's probably what I'm thinking too. I mean, the boards do have a finish on a linen finish on them and yeah. you know, the, there was it's a, not a solid board. It is piece it together, but it's not bowing and it doesn't create a big, yeah. huge gap. Like some of the boards do when you get that. So overall I'm happy with it. All right. So now moving on to the actual theme again, um, Again, very similar. <laughs> it meets it, and I think adding a component of camels um, is kind of it. I think that's a good thing. There's yeah. definitely camel racing, racing at this, you know, and it fits into the theme really, really well. So I did think that they chose things that yep. meshed with the already. With well, the theme I think already. the camel race actually adds to the theme, whereas yeah. I mean, most of it is just a track that you could overlay any theme to. You know, it, it, the camel race actually makes it feel more. Uh, like something you might find in Marrakesh, you know. Like. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, is you say that, but not necessarily, because here you have your your city and your city gates protecting, like, your different... Like, yeah. the board itself has some stuff. Um, yeah, and yeah, the temple track and the political track are, you know, just tracks. But at the same time, it all makes sense. But I do agree that the camel definitely, you know, maybe to a lot of people, because the race aspect did, you know, was definitely mm -hmm. there. Um, so overall theme wise, I'm probably going to give this a seven and a half. The artwork's not like great, but it's nice. It's, yeah. like, it's fine. You know? Um, and again, the theme works, it works. Yeah. So I'm uh, down. There are still a ton of iconography and you have no cheat sheets for it, which we'll get into with the rule book. But you know, the iconography is more prevalent than the art. Well, and we normally talk about iconography in, in the game or in the rules. And we'll yeah. talk about that. And let's move on to the rules. All right. So uh, as far as the rule books go, I mean, there is a new rule book. So you got your standard first, you know, first rule book, then your addendum. And now you've got a third rule book that you're going to have to keep out at all times. This one has the, uh, on the back, the summary of how the camel component works and the solo mode. I will say this does have a really nice fleshed out solo mode, way so, more so than the original game does. So if you are a solo player, you probably want to look into this because th that's the third, if you will, expansion in this is the solo mode and it's about half the rule book. So th they've done a good job fleshing that out. Uh, but the rule book, it is not hard to follow what it's easy to teach what the camels does and what the nomads do in the game so it does that effectively it doesn't have a component list in the front or in the front that's pictures with it it's got broken into several sections one for each of the the uh, expansions because this is basically a, a bunch of mini expansions if you then will. you can add at your leisure yeah. so that's helpful yeah so you're going to have to go through and you know read each section and decipher which components go with what. The the big issue with this is one of the expansions, which is actually my favorite, I think, is the Variable Player Powers expansion. They have different buildings that give you special powers. They really needed to flesh that out more. There's a lot of questions, particularly with one of the buildings that didn't the iconography on it would have would have made it basically non-functional the first round of the game. And people were asking, well, how does this work? And we went to board game forums and there was no real answers. Finally, somebody got an answer, I guess, back via email from Queen Games and told me basically to ignore the iconography and you get to purchase the, one of the tiles It's for these scrolls. You get to purchase the scroll up front, which is you know counterintuitive to what the icons show. This game in general has a lot of that in the rules. I mean, it's always been one that you're going to have a lot of stumbling through. Yeah, well, a lot because there is so many and there's so many aspects. There's a lot of nuance um, with each individual thing. 
And so we had played it early last year. And um, during New Year's, we ended up bringing it out. And again, because someone's like, hey, I really want to play this. You guys really love this. And I was like, yeah, you don't have to twist my arm to play a game I already know. Um, the problem was, is we had, for I had, for me, I had forgotten so much of it because mm -hmm. it's so nuanced. Um, so, And even in our review last time, we made a, mis a significant mistake and overpowered the stairs going up. So just to clarify on that rule, because oh, yeah. we got it wrong in the first video, the white and black stairs that go up the center of the board, when you basically, every time you reach a threshold, you're, you, there's a line that connects the two paths, the white and the black path. And you go down that line, you get a coin for going over the threshold, but you also get one of the icons, not all of them, which is how we originally stated in our first Right, video. which is, of course, that's why it made it overpowered. Yeah. And then the other piece of it is, like, we've been doing the river track so much. So, like, the first two, the first couple games we played, no one really did the river track. But I was with, um, when we played over New Year's, that was a strategy that uh, one of the individuals did because he had gotten some of the scrolls that kind of benefited that. So he just went all out, which yeah. makes sense. And he kicked my tail in. So I was trying to figure this one out. And so that's where I was digging into the rules where we found that we made some mistakes there yeah. too. So I think overall it's very nuanced. I think it's definitely going to take a few more games to play. Um, if you're not firm, I would not add the expansions until you understand the base. Yeah. I think that's going to be my key recommendation. Play the normal one for a couple times. Make uh, sure you feel confident. At least a couple times. Yeah, make sure you feel confident and okay with the rules before you start adding. Um, because it adds a lot of strategy, which is good, but it's, you yeah. know, it's... There's a lot of new ones. Now, the good news with the expansions is a lot of it is just extra tiles. So you have new provision tiles, which are things that you can you pay each round or else you basically suffer a penalty of negative victory points. And they've added tiers to that where you can get additional special powers and for each time it's you can pay it. But it costs you a lot more resources. Well, to I'll be honest. I didn't find them worth it, so I didn't do them at the last game, but I got some crappy ones, so it would be different depending on yeah. what you got. Because what I got, I was like, I'm just not going to pay the extra resources because I'm broke. Well, I, I mean, game. I had a good one this time where it gave me like the a power to go up an extra space on the white track every time I went up the white track. Well, I got the one for the black. I just chose not to do it because I'm yeah. like, that costs so much more resources like, it costs you an extra resources, and you get it one time, so it's like, okay, I'm paying a date to go up one, which may or may not be worth it, but part of me was just like, last time I almost did not make my resource count. I did so, so I was like, I'm not doing it this go round. Yeah, I didn't make it that one time, and I had to pay, you should pay a stiff penalty in this game if you don't pay for all the food and coin and oh, so Oh, it's rough, because it's cumulative. Uh, so back to, what are you going to give the rule book? Uh, given the fact that there's things that are obvious gaps that, that take a confusing game and make it even more confusing, I'm going to probably give this a six. I don't think it, uh, it overall, it's easy to understand, but there, it's, it's such a complex game. And when you try to read it and it makes it worse because now there's holes in the rules and the icon icons don't match with what it's actually interpreting as. And oh, you're talking about the specific one. Yeah, one, well, one it, special there's, but there was more than just that one well, I that caused that, confusion. Yeah. We had to keep referring back to the book the whole game. Well, and it's not even the this rule book. It's yeah. all of the rule yeah. books. You just got to have them yeah, by you, yourself. And given the fact that this is already a table hall, you've now got three rule books you've got to keep out. And you've got a cheat sheet that doesn't, I mean, it's, it's double-sided with two different languages. But it, all, it tells you what the Keshis do, but that's it. You well, know I, mean? I mean, but that is super beneficial. So, yeah, the, well, they, yeah, but they could have taken what's in the rules and added two of that and give you a new cheat sheet when they came out. With yeah, it. or something. Um, so, yeah, I get that. So, yeah, all I, right. I can't give it more than six. All right, so let's move on to the actual gameplay. So, what does it add? So, now um, we're going to talk about the starting player powers, basically. You get two of these purple tiles, you choose one, hurrah, and it changes your starting resources. So in the the original game, you have a set, you get one coin, yeah. one water, and one whatever. This makes it a little bit different. You get a Keshi of some sort. Normally, I've seen all of them. Most of them had yeah. a different color of Keshi to start out with. It had some variation of resources, 
and then you get a three level scroll. So you get three scrolls, you choose one and you um, get rid of the rest. Um, and then it gives you some type of player ability. Well, that's what's really cool about these is they're actually two sided where if you want to step into this, you can take it and just get the ex different resources on one side. And on the other side, if you want to introduce the special variable player powers, you can. You don't have to. You, so you have two options. I like that. I thought that was really clever. Yeah. Well, see, so my thing is, I will say this. Mine set me up for negative three victory points. If I did not get the companion, it doesn't end up... I, I This one kind of sucks. But it kind of worked out since I got the... Um, other thing. All right. Um, so that's that. Then the other thing that it's adding is the camel. So it adds a racing component. So basically, whenever you get a Keshi, you have the choice to place it on your player board or take it to the camel race. Okay. Now the camel race lets you move every time you place a Keshi, you move your camel. However, it matters about the color variation. So the more diversity you have on your track of different Keshis, the more your camel moves. Now, uh, it takes you five different colors to get three, which I thought was a bit stingy. Yeah. <laughs> because not one of us has ever finished the race, but I have gotten close both times, and I, like, and I maxed it out. Like, I, yeah. my things were completely uh, full. You know, you, the, the thing is, you could I could have won the race. The problem is, is there's checkpoints along the way where you have to stop and pay resources. And if you don't have the resources, you're just stuck there. And I was short resources all the time, mostly because I took that powerful thing at the beginning on my, uh, you know, on my choices as far as the restrictions I had to pay each time. And that caused me to be short on resources, particularly on water. Uh, so I kept getting stuck on the path. Yeah. And I ended up getting the double water power, which worked out very nicely for me. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the thing is, is I think you have, but here's what I will say. It was needed. Yeah. Because sometimes you would fill up on your cashies and you would go to the draft and all you could draft is things that you've already filled. You couldn't use them. It's kind of lame. Um, well, you're not even allowed to draft them. Well, you're not even allowed to draft them. Now you can draft them and put over into the camel show if you have spaces there. Um, unlike me, twice I ran out of space. Um... So there is that piece of it as well. So that was very much needed. Um, and it allowed to play my board a little bit differently too. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of appreciated that as well. Um, the, only, the only thing playing this that has been annoying, like I, I love what they added, but now I really hate the fact that these don't cycle. Um, and I feel like... Well, they do because one of the things that's cool about it is they have these three... No, tiles. I'm not talking about for the expansion. I'm talking about for the scrolls. Oh, the scrolls, yeah. Like, I, they need to be recycled every round. Yeah. I may house roll that. Uh, <laughs> it's so annoying to me. But, but you know, if, if you were just to play your cashews to the race, it's eventually going to fill up. So they came out with the idea of introducing each round. They've got a series of different actions you can take, spending those cashews to get them off your board so you can play them again and therefore continue moving. And they give you perks based upon if you got the right color combinations. Now, unfortunately, a few times I didn't have the right color combinations, and then you're still out of luck. Oh, um, that was fine. But it does give you the ability to clear out, and you know, it, that's it was definitely needed. But I thought that was a clever implementation. No, I think that was good because the problem is, like I said, diversity. You get more movement. So the first round, you almost don't want to give up your cashies. But by the third round, it's so full, but then you want the higher movement. So you kind of have to make those yeah. choices um, when you go through that. And so... Um, but it, what balanced. it also does is it slows down development on your board because now you've got to decide. And if somebody's running away with the race, you start getting the poop tokens, which are negative victory points. So you can't ignore the race unless everybody mutually ignores the race. Well, then at that point, why even bother putting the in, in the exactly. expansion? Um, you know, and that's the thing. It's modular. So if you don't want to play with it, you don't have to play with it. But it does slow you down your board development. Um, so I, I noticed, though, like in the first round and two rounds, I just tried to keep up with you and you suck because <laughs> you kept... Um, trying to race me, but on the third round, that's when I went all out because at that point, Keshis are, are, aren't worth very much because of the board development issue. Um, so that's that's a strategy you can end up playing. Um, but there's also, like, I typically don't use my 
uh, dark brown cashew. So I was fine putting them over there <laughs> because I was like, I don't need these. Here you go. So we didn't talk about the nomads. So the nomads are, uh, we mentioned it's a wild. It's not quite a wild, but they work similar. So basically every time you drop the cashews into the dice tower or whatever you want to call it, you add one to the selection pool and you can draft it for the cost of a, a date and a uh, water. water. And, and you can choose it instead of any of the other choices. And they don't accumulate. So yeah. if one isn't bought, it just stays for the next round. Yeah. And you draft it and you get to put it, put it as any color you put to, to some extent. You can't treat it as a, one of the resource colors and you can't treat it as a... Well, the trade goods. It yeah. doesn't count as a trade, yeah, trade good. good. You can use it as a brown, but it's stuck there once you play it. So you play it and it acts as a, a wild at the, at the location you put it at. You can also choose to put it up on your board. The thing is, is it will count in filling the section up to give you the section bonus, but it does not count as that color. So if you get one of the oases that has a bonus for having the pink tokens or the blue tokens or what have you, it won't count as that color. But it still increases the power of the different actions exactly. that you take. And there was some confusion there when we were first And, and then one, at, every time you take an action, you can pay a coin to move them each one of them costs a coin, but you can move them all around to basically stack your power, which is really something we didn't take advantage of for. Right, because especially if you're wanting something a little bit more, like if you need a more powerful action, being able to spend a coin to get that, get what you needed. Um, you know, and I think back, I should have done that more to be able to do this last jump. You know, like there are things that I could have done yeah. that I should have used it for, because there was a lot of times I'm like, dang, I'm short one cashy. I should have just moved my crap around. I didn't think about doing that. <laughs> but you, you were always short on coin. I was. This game, I was short on, but the one before that, I wasn't. Um, so it's just a matter of mm -hmm. the powers that you have. And that's the thing I like about this game is like the first game I had issues with dates. But then again, it, you know, one person was focused on getting all the green. And so I couldn't get the green to get the dates. But now this game... You weren't really fighting me for them in the beginning. Yeah. So dates, I had a plenty, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and that's the thing is you you face different struggles every single time. And that makes this game new and fresh. Yeah. Um, Other than that, it just added more scrolls, more of the uh, yeah. things you can purchase and more trade good to tiles, yeah. which I don't know exactly why you need that many because you only use three per game. But You've got well, them. they're very varied. Yeah, they're definitely giving you um, more choices. And and it's uh, you know it's sad because that's my only issue. And like I mentioned, and this has not to do with expansion; it has to do with game. These need to have more turnover. I don't know. I just feel like they should. And this is just Miranda speaking because that's what I decided. <laughs> All right, guys, um, rate it. Um, me, the expansion. I think an eight. I think the camels were needed being able to have somewhere to push your cashies specifically when you filled your board. And overall, it gives a little bit more stretch to the cashie building because um, where do I put it? Um, and then the nomads add a little bit of a uh, fun factor. I don't think we fully explored and opportunities of having moving them around a bit. Um, so I'm at an eight. What about you? I'm probably a nine. I, I think that it's got functionality that I think improves the game. It definitely adds to the game. Correct. Yeah, that is true. And I, you know, given the fact that this is already a nine plus level game. That's true. I personally think this giving more variety, it changes the strategy dynamic of the game immensely. It does. Because it, it's, you know, instead of trying to, I mean, you didn't even fill up a single section on your board last game. But I still won. I, I'm not saying you didn't. I'm saying that that's your usual thing is and you and I both to try to fill up our sections because you get 10 points per section. That well, way. and it's full, but there are other things now. Like for me, winning the camels, that was 16 victory points. Right. You know, that's almost, that's a section and a half of filling. Okay. So I gave up some, but to get it um, specifically towards the end when I realized, okay, I'm not gonna be able to fill these suckers up. So I'm willing to give up my cashies. Um, but I don't think I use the nomads effectively because but I needed more points. I was so freaking short of coins. <laughs> so yep. I have to work through that one. Um, figure that aspect of it out. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We had an absolute blast. I'm super glad to be able to play this one again. We'll catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.